Hello, I'm Tim Harris. This is Julie Harris, and this is Real Estate Coaching Radio. That's right. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any future episodes. Thanks again for popping by. Hit that like button, and don't forget to leave your comments and questions so we can get right back with you. We will. Thank you for continuing to make our podcast, Real Estate Coaching Radio, the number one listened to podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. And let us know what you think about this video. Leave your comments below. Thank you. Three, two, one, and we're back. And what we're focusing on today are the secrets to know before you write a winning offer, or more specifically, how to win when you're working with a buyer to get the contract accepted. I mean, that's something everyone needs to know, right, Julie? Yeah, sometimes it can feel like you're on the hamster wheel, you know, just finding a house and then finding a house they actually want to buy, right? And making sure that they can actually buy it. You have all of these different things you have to deal with. You might as well be the one who wins the bid, and yet sometimes you're not. So we're going to help you figure out how to negotiate to win. Now, a lot of you listen to us while you're on the treadmill or walking or driving or doing your daily activities, and that's great. I love it when Julie and I get pictures of all of you uh, listening to us while you're on the treadmill or stuck in traffic in L.A. or, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever. So uh, our notes, the reason I'm sharing that with you is our notes are below. So you just scroll down on iTunes or if you're over on Spotify or anywhere else, and certainly over on timandjulieharris.com, you can read the actual notes that Julie and I are using. So if you don't have the ability to take notes and we say something that you really know will be useful in your business for maybe your team or your brokerage, well, we made it easy for you. Just scroll down. The notes are there. And when you are scrolling down, you're also going to see a link so you can join Premier Coaching. If you've not yet done so, and thousands of you have so far in the last 12 months, do not delay. Knowing how to actually work with buyers at a high level and all the other things we teach you in Premier Coaching are absolutely critical in this market. A lot of the skills that you had in the previous market were transferable, are transferable to this new market, but I have news for you guys. It's getting way more complicated now, and you've got to know how to matriculate through all the little nuanced differences, and that's what Premier Coaching is all about. If you feel like you're struggling, if you feel like, oh my gosh, this business has gotten really, really hard, maybe the business is is essentially the same as it is. Maybe what's changed or what needs to change is your relationship with essentially your skill set. In other words, if you are feeling a high level of stress and struggle in your real estate business, it's not because you need to completely revamp what you're doing for the most part. It's going to be because you need to make small nuanced changes. And you're not going to know what those changes are until you've actually exposed yourself to how you'll be, the confidence you'll feel when you actually do have the knowledge. Because when you have the knowledge, you are going to have confidence. And that's what Premier Coaching is all about. So scroll down, join Premier Coaching right now. It costs you nothing. You have instant free 30-day access. So buyers, agents, all of our listeners out there, do you plan to just make an offer and see how it goes? Or do you plan to win the house for your clients? The definition of negotiating is to bring two or more parties to an acceptable agreement. So be in it to win it, but learn to negotiate professionally so that you can take the stress out of the process for you and your buyers. So today we're going to help you polish up those negotiating skills. Well, get the facts. Remember that knowledge equals confidence, ignorance equals fear. What do you actually know about the subject property? What do you know about the seller's situation? Today, we're going to give you 11 things you must know before you write up your next offer. And we may not get to all 11, but that's why the notes are there for you to scroll down for. Okay, so know all you can about the subject property, about the seller's wants, their situation, their needs. Whether you're on the listing side or the buyer side, here here are the facts to gather before you start negotiating. Now, bonus to all of our premier coaching members and new, you know, if you're signing up today, the negotiation checklist is included in premier coaching. We're not giving all of it to you on this podcast. We're just exposing you to the fact that it's there, right? And by the way, when you're trying to work with especially a more sophisticated buyer and you show them your negotiating checklist, Um, and you show them actually all the things you're going to know before they make an offer on a property, that's going to be in many cases all it takes for them to know that you're a professional and they're going to want to work with you. Remember what I was saying a second ago about skills? And so pay very close attention to these points. And again, we're going to do our best to get through all 11 points, but no fear, the notes are uh, below. Just scroll down, you'll see them. They're waiting for you. That's right. So Mark Twain said, supposing is good, but finding out is better. Imagine if you went to a doctor and the doctor said, you know, most of my patients come in with a sore throat, so I'm just going to give you this prescription. Well, that was supposing that you're like everyone else instead of finding out what your symptoms are. So let's get into the questions to ask. So question number one, buyer's agents, read all of the MLS descriptions, including extended comments and agent comments. Many times the listing agent will actually state exactly what it'll take. 
for the seller to consider the offer, maybe even for you to be the winning offer. If not, call the agent and find out what the seller's priorities are, not just assuming that it's the price. And listing agents, you know, if you want to have fewer buyer's agents to call back, put, you know, what you need in the comments so that they can read it and so, be clear. Again, drill down on what Julie just said. First of all, buyer's agents, be super, super respectful to the listing agents. Yes. Be nice, be respectful. And you will be, and you know, throw them a compliment, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and you'll be hurt. shocked how frequently the sellers, I'm not suggesting the listing agent is going to tell you anything that would compromise their agency no. relationship, but there will be things that they are that they are given the seller's permission to share with potential agents. And you now will have information. For example, their new construction closes in 90 days or they're relocating or whatever, whatever. Well, I'll tell you something that we always heard. They have got to keep that stainless steel refrigerator. Oh yeah, Like exactly. they'll go to the mat over that or uh, they don't want the pool table, or they do want the swing set, or you know, whatever it is, if it's something special that's gonna make all the difference, find out what it is so you can win. Mr. Listing Agent, what would it take? Like, What's really important to the, the seller so that I know when I write this, I'll make your job super easy. Remember, that's what it's about. What can I do to make your job easier so it's a no-brainer for your seller and you to want to accept our offer? What, what specifically is important to the seller? And be don't be surprised when they tell you even maybe more than you would have felt comfortable saying sure. had you received that call as a listing agent because that happens all the time. Well, they want to win too. They want to get that listing sold as well. All right, point number two. Point number two, notice if there are any details listed such as not FHA approved or seller financing may be available. Seller to contribute up to $5,000 towards buyer's closing costs or as is only. I saw one of those this morning. Contingent on seller finding suitable housing. Let me add It could be to many, this. many things. Look, Go ahead. If you're making an offer on a condo, you want to do some homework and find out the health of that HOA. Because, for example, there might be, um, and you know, if you guys are in, you know, say Vegas or some of these other markets, those buildings are not that old, but they're getting old, which means mm -hmm. their flat roofs are going to need to be replaced, which means all the paving is going to need to be updated. Special assessment time. Ex exactly. So you need to find out what the health of the actual HOA is, and that actually is relevant even if it's not a condo, because many communities have HOAs, and turns out there's about to be a special assessment to completely redo the community pool or something like that. You want to know because the buyer is going to want to have that information uh, at their fingertips and the listing agent doesn't necessarily have to disclose that. Maybe they don't even know because the seller didn't even disclose it to them. Point number three. Point number three, run the history or some MLS is called the archive of the property. Also search Zillow, Google, even YouTube to see if maybe it was a for sale by owner prior to being listed. This search should take you five minutes or less, but it could be the difference between winning or losing. Maybe they were on YouTube as a for sale by owner for two years at a higher price or a lower price. Do five minutes of forensics to find out what's happening with the property. Or just drop the address into Google. So it, you know, that's yeah, the that'll move. capture all of it. But here's the problem. Or well, if you don't do this, your buyer is doing it. And if yes. the buyer has more information on the property, yeah. you're going to be at a disadvantage. And here's where, I, frankly, it's going to be uh, problematic for some of you. The sell, or rather, the buyer is going to do homework, going to find out that the uh, seller bought the house, say, five years ago for less than half of what they're selling it for. And some of these buyers are going to be a little bit janky about that. How does it, you know, they're not going to be in touch with what the market's actually done. Maybe they're a little jealous. Who knows? So uh -huh. you're going to have to, again, anticipate that the buyers are going to have to, you know, cross that emotional bridge because that's the reality of a market like this. Because if you did buy real estate five years ago, uh, you did win the real estate lottery, hell, even 24 months ago. Well, on average, countrywide, on average, since 2019, homes have gone up by 43%. Now, some markets, it's been between 50 and 60%. So I should have this in here. I'm going to revise the notes. To do, you guys are used to doing CMAs for your sellers, do CMA for your buyer and show them that it's not just this seller who paid that two years ago and is making this, but the entire neighborhood is doing that. That's why they're priced that way because the comps say so. And then you'll have inexperienced buyers will get janky about, well, what's to say this isn't the market top? And then you need to explain to them how inflation works. And essentially the inflation rate is, you know, going down a little bit, but it's going to stay consistently um, 5%, 6%, 7%. And by the way, when you hear the inflation rate, it does not include real estate appreciation or inflation. So the reality of it is, is real estate rents and everything else associated with housing is just going to get more expensive. Um, and I, this again goes back to knowledge equals confidence, ignorance equals fear. This is not difficult information to get, to obtain. And once you have it, especially about your local market, you're going to feel compelled, excited about mm -hmm. sharing with as many prospective clients as you possibly can. Next point, Julie Harris. Number four, find the days on the market so far. Is this a fresh listing or has it been on and off the market previously? 
Has the price been raised or lowered? Has it been pending before and gone back on the market? What caused that? Inspection or appraisal issues? It's okay to call the listing agent and find out. So if something's been on the market for two days, and this is the weekend, and you're one of six showings today, and they have an open house tomorrow, probably you're going to need to come in higher, assuming that it's priced right and you have comps to support that, versus a house that has been on the market for 120 days, and you're the only showing this week. Do you see the difference? Absolutely. Right. So point number five, what are the comparable sales for this property? I guess I did have it in here. You, you know, Julie, <laughs> I, I, we, this you triggered something in my mind What's when that? you said that. Um, do not make the mistake of assuming the most important thing to your buyer is the price. I'm going to say that again. Mm -hmm. Do not make the mistake of assuming the most important thing to your buyer is the price. Let them tell you what the most important thing is, but I'll tell you what they're going to tell you. It's going to be, now if they're an investor, obviously it's going to be price, sure. <laughs> but everyone else, it's going to be convenience. Convenience, you need to ask them what that actually defines, what it means to them. Or they might say things like, I'm looking for a good deal. Mr. Seller, buyer, sorry, I hear that frequently. What exactly does a good deal mean to you? And then you're going to listen and you're going to hear things like good condition, move in right away. You know, I go from my present living situation to my new living situation, and then of course price. In other words, price is very, 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 very rarely the most important thing to anybody when they're buying anything. It's the payment. Yeah, and it's winning. Yeah, <laughs> getting the house they want and in the time market, they want it. And the market's going to be here for a long period of time. That's you win by getting the listing, by getting the actual property. Yeah, and here's some of you guys have learned this the hard way. If you fail to do that after one, two, three offers. They'll fire you. Yeah. Maybe silently. That's called ghosting you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We had, and I'm not going to say who it is, but one of our coaching clients last week was not being proactive enough, finding new construction as an option. And guess what the buyer did? They went and found it on their own. So if you guys aren't delivering the winning bid, whether that's on new construction or resale, your buyers, and it's always the most motivated and qualified buyers because they're the ones that know they can do it. Because they're under the most pressure and yes. they're not satisfied that you're working as hard for them as you should be mm -hmm. and you lose the deal. That happens all the time. Listen to our podcast. We tell you how to always win if you use the information we share Assuming with you. you're approachable. Yes. Right. Okay. Point number five, what are the comparable sales for the property? The most recent sales and pendings, how many days on the market did those homes take to sell? What's the current list to sell price ratio? That's the difference between the list price and the closing price. Are those numbers going up or down? Now you may know your stats. Let's say you live in Seattle. Okay. You know your stats for Seattle overall. However, you need to be running all of this for the subject neighborhood and the subject property because just like everywhere, there's going to be pockets that do really well and pockets that don't do so well that are taking longer days on the market and have a bigger spread between the list to sell price ratio. Again, they're going to have their heads, buyers oftentimes, filled with misinformation. So you're going to have to actually be prepared. Uh, do not walk into a situation where you're not going to have the answers to these questions. And this is just, this is an edited version of this checklist because what will happen is you're going to run into some very analytical buyer and they're going to have done all this homework themselves. Mm -hmm. And when they know more than you do and you didn't uh, basically come prepared, it's going to be A, embarrassing, but B, it might be the end of that relationship. And then they're going to choose to go to, uh, and I'll, I'll, this is also what's happening. The listing agents, you know what I'm about to say is true. A lot of time buyers are skipping the buyer's agents going directly to the seller's I'm sorry, the listing Listen. agents, right? Mm -hmm. And why? It's because the buyer's agents, frankly, a lot of times aren't able to provide the information that they want in the, in the manner in which they want it. So they go directly to the listing agent, setting aside even their own best interests in terms of agency, but they'll still do that. Um, they'll so, even door knock the seller sometimes. Exactly. And by the way, when you join Premier Coaching, we do give you a buyer presentation that is included with Premier Coaching. So just like going on a listing appointment, you have our listing presentation. Going on a buyer presentation, you have our buyer presentation. And right? the buyer mastery program that goes with that. Exactly. I think that's level five or something. I think so. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So point number six, what is the active competition? Does the buyer have zero other options, a few options, or many options? Is there new construction in the area? And how does the subject property compare? Note, if there are very few competing homes, you can always expect to pay more, not less, unless it's been on the market for excessive days. And if that's the case, find out why. So you can see the difference if you, you know, you're bringing your buyer to the table and it's the only listing in that neighborhood and all the competing neighborhoods around it. Well, probably you're going to compete, find out for sure. You're probably going to end up higher than if it's, you know, got seven other homes and you can say to the listing agent, well, if it doesn't work out, we'll just go look at something else. But go to the first point Julie made. Always contact, if you can, the listing agent and find out what the seller's motivation is because the seller might actually, if your buyer can wait, say, you know, 
90 days before they close or rather maybe 90 days before they can have possession. And that makes it so the seller only has to move from their old property to their new property. The seller will probably be willing to not obviously just accept your offer, but maybe even a lower price to avoid yeah. the inconvenience of having to move twice. You've got to know this information. Yes. In fact, uh, case in point, one of our coaching clients was very frustrated because they thought they had written a super strong offer. I said, tell me about the offer. And it was, it was over list price. It was this, that, and the other. But you know what their mistake was? They said they assumed that they were going to win because they said they could do a two-week closing. Guess what the seller wanted? A two-month closing. Exactly. That's why they lost in spite of price. Point so number seven. Point number seven. What else is important about this property? Is it in the uh, floodplain? Is it in an area that's extremely competitive? Maybe there's a new corporation moving into town with lots of executives. What's going to happen to that field behind the house? Are they really going to bury the power line soon? Right. <laughs> um, so... What else is important about the property? Again, to my other example, you know, don't assume that every seller wants a super fast closing or that they want a lease back. Find out what's going on. Okay, so our next section is what do you know about the seller's priorities? We've touched on that quite a bit. Um, you mentioned it a second ago, point number eight. What is the seller's motivation? Why are they moving? Do they want to move or do they have to move or have they already moved? Generally, a seller who has already bought their next home is more motivated than the one who is only moving if they can get their price and hasn't even looked for their next property. Ask the listing agent and see what you can find out about their actual situation. Now, I'm going to give you guys some advanced coaching on this because you're going to discover sometimes the listing agents actually haven't fully pre-qualified their sellers. True. And you'll think, well, they're not telling me the answers to these questions because you know, they're just trying to play their cards close to their chest. No, it's because this listing agent didn't ask the seller's motivation, doesn't really know their time frame. And unfortunately, that just is a, I think, a legacy of, frankly, lack of training that a lot of listing agents have because they didn't need to know from the previous agent. So don't be offended if the listing agent doesn't want to tell you. They're just embarrassed because they don't actually know. So one of the other things you can do is you can find out who the seller is, usually, from property records and then drop their names into a Google search and find out if there's something going on. Yeah. You know, if it's more expensive, you'll, you know, maybe you're dealing with a professional athlete. If it's, um, you know, maybe there's a divorce going on. Maybe there's something else going on. Maybe someone just sold a company or something, right? Well, maybe they just closed on a property that pops up with their names on it, exactly. right? Exactly. So do yeah. a little bit of homework on the seller using, you know, end of it. So if it's a married couple, put their names together and then uh, do another search with their names individually because sometimes real estate is owned in just the individual's name. And then oftentimes where people are more sophisticated, they'll own it through an LLC. And the way you can find out if, like if you guys have ever wondered how celebrities will buy real estate and you won't know what bought they what real estate they bought, it's because they buy them in LLCs. But here's the mistake they almost always make. They always make the mistake of buying the real estate in the same LLC over and over again. So some of our top LA luxury agents, they know the names of the LLCs mm -hmm. that the top celebrities mm -hmm. are buying their properties in. So when they see a property sale come up under that LLC, they'll obviously know who it was that uh, bought the property. I know uh, Sylvester Saloon yeah. was, it, he buys, he's like a real estate, I, dare I say, flipper. Mm -hmm. And we had two coaching clients that were working with him in um, Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. And he always bought through LLCs, huh. but he bought through two different LLCs. Mm -hmm. and, and so these guys could say, oh, Sly Saloon just bought a house. That means he's going to want to be putting this for sale in the next oh, six months to flip it. Right. Following the breadcrumbs, guys. Yep. You know, uh, Benjamin Franklin famously said, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. So gather all of your breadcrumbs so you can win. I think number nine, we covered what's the seller's ideal closing and possession date. Do they have a specific time frame that's important to them? Maybe you can deliver on that. Maybe you're the only one that will be willing to deliver on that. Uh, point number 10, what else besides price is important to the seller? We've talked about that a lot. Uh, and you know, what would they rather include or not include? Maybe you can deliver on that. And then point number 11, has the seller had other offers and turned them down? If so, what was wrong with those offers? How can you win this time? Or maybe they just have unrealistic expectations. You know, symptomatic of the hot seller's market where the expectations are still super high, there are sellers out there, and I have to say it's usually the less motivated ones, for whatever reason, who will reject a perfectly good full list price because they got it too fast, right? Yep. We didn't have that happen that much, but it was always really frustrating. Like, well, instead of well, it's frustrating because <laughs> the sellers were like, "Oh my gosh, you sold the, you must have you underpriced, underpriced it. it, right? Exactly. I hated that. Okay, yeah. no, we priced it right, or you wouldn't have an offer on the table, right? But maybe that's the case, and you need to talk to the listing agent. And if that's what's happening, well, what is the price they are looking for, 
And are there any comps to support it so you won't have an appraisal issue? Maybe it's still okay, right? You've got to do your homework. Taking a half step back to point number 10, be very careful about asking for what's it called legally chattel, right? Right. Stuff. Don't, stuff. Don't ask for the seller's stuff, right? Have that be a secondary negotiation. That's required in some states that it's an actual separate contract and you can't do that. Right. So know what's legal where you live. Do it outside of the contract. I, look, I get it. Sometimes you're going to walk into a house and the fur, especially again, upper end, and the furniture is actually obviously made for the house, like, you know, weird shapes and stuff. Yeah, and resort markets have that pretty commonly. Exactly. I get it. And so, but don't ask for it in the offer. Um, make sure that's separate because otherwise you're going to be all of a sudden in the used furniture business. Wheeling and, that, and dealing. And, <laughs> and Right. Wheeling and dealing. You know, Julie, it, we could have easily, when we were selling real estate, started a business that sold, and anyone that's been in uh, real estate for a while, especially on the listing side of things, you guys are about to laugh. Okay. So we could have started used hot tubs, yep. used pool tables, and used Persian rug uh, business And we would have made a fortune because virtually every (laughs) listing we sold, nobody wanted their hot tub, nobody wanted their pool tub, and nobody wanted the Persian rug. And I would say also dining room sets. I actually have a coaching client that has built up a mini staging company with uh, warehousing stuff that people couldn't decide who was going to get it. So she got it basically at wholesale and she's been building up her own staging furniture and decor and all these things. So yeah, I mean, don't get entangled in that. And it also really complicates comps and appraisals and back and forth. And then then think about now you've got to go through the walkthrough. And now you have to go with, with a checklist of whether they're getting the piano or not. You know, that's that's not the best uh, approach. So keep yourself out of that. Yeah. And I'll give you, again, advanced coaching next level. Don't get involved with that at all, right? If the no. seller, after you get the house in contract, after the inspections are done, <laughs> after all the Mickey Mouse is done, you then let Mr. Seller hook up with Mr. Buyer and they can do their own wheeling and dealing over the You guys just work it out. Right. You don't want to be part of that because you could get drawn into that and all of a sudden you're now again having to, you know, label everything, what the prices are and getting the list. And I it. thought I was getting that picture. Exactly. Yeah. If you want to know how you can get in trouble legally, it's because all of a sudden, you know, the... The chandelier that the seller was supposed to leave isn't there. And guess what you're now doing? You're facing down a lawsuit for a $5,000 chandelier or you're going to buy him a damn yeah, chandelier. Yeah, and then there's another level of it, which was what was actually listed in the MLS. Exactly. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's definitely a rabbit hole you don't want to be in. Experienced <laughs> listing agents, hopefully you guys all got a good laugh because you've experienced this yep. all yourselves. So guys, thank you for keeping this number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the wonderful five-star reviews over on iTunes. If you've not yet done so, obviously would love to have you as a member of Premier of the Premier Coaching community. The link is in the show description. You guys have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. Hello, thank you for having watched this video. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right, and don't forget to hit that like button, leave your comments and questions below, and we will get right back with you. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to watch the next one. You're gonna love that one.